Yeah, our group is mostly in concern about trying to elucidate whether the cannabinoid system can control the proliferation, differentiation, and survival of cells in our body, either pathologic, pathologically, as in cancer, or physiologically, as for instance, during brain uh, development in the embryo. So in cancer, we are trying to find out whether the endogenous cannabinoid system is a tumor suppressive a system. It's a system that protects our cells from getting transformed and those transformed cells from proliferating and surviving. So far our data support that at least pharmacological activation of cannabinoid receptors can decrease the growth of tumor cells in different models of cancer in mice and, and rats. Still we don't know what would happen in humans. And we are also dealing with the endogenous system, as I said, and we are trying to, to demonstrate that, in fact, the endogenous system is a break for tumor growth in the body. Yeah, cannabis is a complex plant. It has many different compounds about 100 different cannabinoids and about 400 other compounds. So when we talk about cannabis, it's always, I think, precise to define which are the most relevant cannabinoids in that complex preparation so that those compounds are the response, the compounds that are responsible for, for the effects. We are mostly dealing with two cannabinoids. One is TAC, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the most important bioactive, bioactive compound in, in in cannabis, and the other one is cannabidiol, which is non, very uh, strongly potent towards cannabinoid receptors, but it has other targets, still unknown, which can also influence tumor cell growth and, and survival. So we work with cannabis extracts because at the end there are many uh, patients that use whole cannabis or cannabis derived preparations, and also the major main uh, medicine, cannabinoid-based medicine that is approved nowadays in Europe is Satidex, that has not only TAC and CBD, but also other, other compounds. But usually to standardize the, the doses and the time courses and the, that kind of factors, or pharmacological factors, it's recommendable to use pure compounds. So we mostly work with TAC and or CBD, in different combinations and also with extracts which are enriched in TAC and, and CBD. We are mostly focused in two different types of cancer. One is brain cancer, brain tumor, filling and brain tumors, and the other one is breast cancer. We have done some work in other types of cancer, but nowadays we are mostly focused on that, and in both types of cancer we have seen that both TAC and CBD alone or in different combinations, and not only themselves, but when combined to classical chemotherapeutic drugs, they have a strong uh, anti-tumor compound, anti-tumor effect in animal models of, of cancer of those types, those types of cancer. Sure. Yeah, there is a possible relation as all the things is not very robustly uh, demonstrated between the intake of cannabinoids from the plant, for mm -hmm. instance, and the levels of endogenous cannabinoids. In general, as it happens with other uh, similar uh, situations, for instance, when a drug is taken that mimics the action of an endogenous system, uh, usually that endogenous system is downregulated when the drug is taken from outside to do the same job, to bind the same receptors. So usually what we find is that when, when an animal is given THC, for instance, the levels of anandamide and 2 aracinoglycerol, the two endocannabinoids, decrease. That is not a rule because there are other, other instances in which it happens the opposite. That is maybe due to the fact that cannabinoid receptors are downregulated very strongly by THC, especially in some areas of the brain. So in those situations, what usually happens is that the intake of TAC by downregulating the receptors increase the generation of an andamide 2AG as a kind of compensatory uh, action. But in general, there is uh, an opposite uh, effect in, 
between cannabinoids and endocannabinoids. I mean, when we take up, when when we take in and cannabinoids, endocannabinoids tend to go down. Well, I think I would divide the possible therapeutic applications of cannabinoids and or modulators of the endocannabinoid system uh, in cancer in two major uh, types of actions. One are the palliative actions, and the second one would be the possibly curative actions, or at least actions towards the origin, the etiology of the, of the disease. Regarding palliation, there are some of the effects of cannabis that are more or less proof, and they are in fact used in the clinics, although not very widely. One is, for instance, the attenuation of nausea and vomiting upon the intake of chemotherapeutic drugs. Another one is pain. And cannabinoids are painkillers, and they work relatively well in some cancer patients. There may be other actions of cannabinoids that can palliate some symptoms of cancer, for instance, anxiety, depression, etc., stress, insomnia, but they are not so well demonstrated, or they are not so widely applied to to the cancer facing populations. So overall, I would have to highlight two of the palliative actions of cannabinoids. There is the anti-emetic action and the pain-killing action, the analgesic action. That is one part of the story, and the other one would be the possible action of cannabinoids to decrease tumor growth. In that respect, we are still a little bit or quite at a loss in humans. I mean, we don't know what would happen in humans, of course. You know, there are many drugs that are tested in mice and in rats that work very well towards cancer, but then when they are taken to clinical trials, they fail, and most of the time because of high toxicity or and or very little bioavailability or high toxicity, etc., and so low t tolerability at the end. We don't know what will happen with cannabinoids. We did a, we conducted a pilot clinical trial some six years ago with a reduced number of glioblastoma patients, precisely, specifically nine patients, and we found that the administration of TSC was safe, it was well tolerated by the patients, and although it was a very small population, we found some responses in terms of biomarkers and in terms of magnetic resonance imaging by, to monitor the size of the tumor in some of the patients. The process is said a very small pilot trial, so we cannot infer any statistically robust conclusion, but it seems that in some of the patients there were some effects. Now we are dealing with combinations of cannabinoids TAC and CBD in that former trial, it was only TAC that was given to the patients. And now we are testing whether combinations of TAC and CBD together with classical chemotherapeutic drugs can exert uh, significant uh, effects in, in animal models. And we have found that, for instance, in the case of glioblastoma, the benchmark drug, that is the, the first line the drug that is used for that type of, of cancer, that is temozolomide, that is an alkylating agent, when combined with cannabinoids, specifically with mixes, mixtures of TAC and CBD, it has a very synergic action. So that is what we would like to test in the, in the clinics in the next years, try to give the patients a cannabinoid-based medicine that is composed of TAC plus CBD together with temozolomide to see whether the cannabinoids can enhance the anti-tumor action of, of the muscle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks very much indeed. If everything's ready here on the dark side of the moon, play the five tones.